Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka. Welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. Today we're heading to Barrington Plantation Historic Site near Washington, Texas, where we're going to watch Percherance, Suffolk Punch, and Belgian Draft Horses, as well as Milking Shorthorn Oxen, work the ground much like it was done 150 years ago. Lead agricultural interpreter Ron Baumgartner tells us about the historic site and its mission. The, uh, the plantation here is a recreation of what the historic plantation would have been about four miles away. Uh, so the home, the historic home was moved within the, the state historic site area uh, in the 1930s first and has been moved a couple times within the site uh, its last move in the 1990s put it at its current location, and these other outbuildings were reconstructed to give context to that original 1840s home. Uh, and for ease of access, things like uh, overall scale has been condensed. So both the barn and the quarters are closer in than they would have been historically at the original location, but since we had the option in rebuilding, we were able to can, again make it more accessible to the visitor. There are a couple reasons why the site is significant overall, why we're here, is because we have the home of the last president of the Republic of Texas, Dr. Anson Jones. So that's, that's the historical significance overall. It ties into the broader Texas history story uh, with this site even because this is where Texas became Texas, uh, where the, the Texas Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, and then it would be the, the home uh, and the office of the last president, this would be the Capitol, uh, while he was president in the 1840s. Uh, and then after, after retiring from office, he would be a planter uh, for pretty well the rest of his life. Uh, so Barrington today, as an outdoor museum, as a site that uh, again involves living history, these skills, we have an even broader mission of maintaining rare heritage breeds. So keeping them from extinction by being active breeders and active advocates for them. Uh, being a bank for heirloom seeds because the, the crops that we grow uh, will perpetuate those things that again aren't, aren't being raised on a large scale. Uh, in terms of a skills bank, we do everything from working with wood, splitting logs, hewing timber. Uh, we we uh, pull fodder if you're if you're not from the south uh, or haven't studied historical corn uh, uh, uses. The pulling fodder is a, a way of getting hay or getting. Uh, getting fodder for the, the cattle in particular uh, and it's stripping the leaves down the stalk no one does that anymore you know you might have heard of topping corn maybe someone's grandparents had topped corn but pulling fodder that's that's a skill that uh, if it's not continued on down the line uh, could perish and that's just one of many different things uh, plowing is a little more broad there are a lot of other historic sites that do plowing uh, but working with the ox in particular uh, is something that's special uh, it's rare in Texas. We're the only site, the really only public place in Texas you'll see oxen at work. There are a couple other private ox owners. Uh, I know one that does agriculture, but only on private property, uh, not for public display. So. I'm Debbie Halford. I'm a secretary of the Texas Draft Horse and Mule Association. I've been uh, the secretary for about 13 years now. Today we are reenacting um, the farming as they did on Anson Jones Farm back in the 1850s. We've been a part of this event for about 12 years now. They've asked us to come every spring and we use our horses to do the walking um, plow harrow and prepare their fields for planting. This is part of our um, 
mission, I guess, is to keep the art of farming with horses alive. So we, um, we get a kick out of doing it, dressing in period clothing and uh, just showing the, the, the visitors what um, can be done with horses. Many people come and visit and talk about how they saw their grandparents do this years ago. And so they get a kick out of seeing the horses doing it today. Our club has about um, 80 to 90 members at any given time, and it is hard to get new members. We've had a couple of young um, families join in the last year, so we're excited about passing that on. Most of our membership is getting older now in their 70s and even 80s, and so we need some young blood to teach. Texas is a really big state. Is the club mostly Eastern Texas or is it the whole state? Actually, it's the whole state. We have membership from all over. The core membership that really participates in the farming aspect is really Central Texas. Okay, all right. Um, and so, can you can you tell me who's here today? Yes, today we have um, Alan Fry, who's the president of the club. They're from Huntsville, Texas, and he has his team of Suffolk Punch. Um, my husband and myself are from uh, Alvin, Texas, south of Houston. We have our Percheron team. Uh, we have uh, Bernard Kane from Somerville. He's one of our board members. Rodney Reed from Ledbetter, Texas. He um, is a longtime member. He's actually the only existing member that was part of our club in 1983. We're celebrating our 40th year this year. Uh, we have some new members that have joined in the last couple of years that brought their Blue Roan Percherons and their Belgians, so we're excited to have them uh, learn. They've never done any farming. They've only done cart work and wagon work, so this is their first time for their horses to get out in the dirt with us. And who was here yesterday? Uh, Curtis was here? Yes. Yesterday we had Dick Curtis. He's one of our board members and a longtime member. He had his team of uh, Percheron mares here. I, I joined the association in 2004, I believe it was, and so um, when I started there was still some uh, horse shows with the club. We still had people interested in showing and that went to the Oklahoma State Fair and various places and that has pretty much died out for our group. So everything now is really about kind of trail rides, not that we do any on the road, but in people's fields and then farm work. Um, we have a, a big group of members that are um, carriage businesses and they do funerals and barats and quinceaneros and things with their horses. And so they're part of our group mainly for networking. They don't really come, you know, to these events and participate. Sure. Great. It's easy to join, I'm guessing. Yes, it is. We have an annual membership, $20 a year for an individual, 30 for a family. And it's just calendar year. We usually have about nine events a year. And over the summer months, it's too hot in Texas to do much. So everything's in the spring and in the fall. And if somebody from Oklahoma or Louisiana wanted to join, you probably wouldn't refuse them. No, we absolutely take anybody. We have some members actually from Oklahoma and New Mexico and such. And again, it's a networking place. A lot of times people are looking for equipment or horses and we're going back and forth from state to state. You've seen our America's Rural Yesterday three book set covering life on the farm in the early 1900s. We're excited to bring you a fourth edition to the series, Early Tractors, featuring more than 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and lots more. Most of the photos are of new or almost new tractors back in the day, showing exactly how they were configured when they came out of the factory. Tractor collectors, history buffs, and folks simply wanting to reminisce about farm life in America's Rural Yesterday will love to have this book. It sells for $24.95 plus shipping. If you buy more than one book in the series, the price per book goes down all the way to $69.95 for all four books. To order, call toll-free 877-647-2452 or visit www.mishka.com. That's 1-877-647-2452. Learned first hands-on here with John Failer. Uh, he's been my living history farming mentor uh, even now. Even as he's promoted up, uh, he's continued to be a, a source of, uh, of guidance and uh, you know, he can help me sometimes problem solve things still with his experience now a couple with my I've been I've been studying this for, for 10 years uh, and been an active part of it uh, in and out I've worked here in, at Fanthorpe Inn uh, but in the field here about eight years total now 
When um, I'm at um, like um, a threshing bee or a, um, a heritage festival that has old iron, old tractors and using um, uh, farm implements from the 30s, 40s, um, there are people there who reminisce about actually using this stuff. Yes. Um, you probably don't get a lot of that here because of the period, um, but do you get some? Certainly we, we get uh, people who have been have done similar things when they were children or remember observing them, uh, uncles or grandfathers doing these things. Some people, I've met people who have, have used a walking plow. Uh, we just had someone this last week that spoke about using a walking plow as a child. And that's, that's pretty far back because again, we're getting to an age that tractors have been in, in the area for close to 100 years uh, at this point. And so uh, we do still have folks that talk about some of the other agricultural activities like uh, picking cotton, but it's a little different. They may, maybe they're picking with a long sack instead of the baskets, but still a lot of common things there. Uh, but we do, we, there are a surprising number of people that are familiar with draft animal work, not oxen per se, but uh, seeing mules being worked. That's kind of the last, the last edge of, of uh, agricultural use with, or use of draft animals in agriculture is mules. I mean, oxen kind of pass away earlier than mules are the last ones really to be used extensively. Uh, my wife's my wife's grandfather. I had a chance to speak with him about using mules and a turn plow, uh, and working in a cotton field. They would use a mule team to get there five miles away, work the mules all day, then use the mules to get back. Um, so those those stories are still out there. We're, that's not quite gone yet. You um you 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 save the seeds from the the corn and the cotton and other garden crops um, to replant for the following year. Right, right. So we always plant from save seed. For our main crops, uh, we are still able. In the case of seeds, seeds versus, uh, say, livestock, uh, heirloom seeds are still more accessible. Uh, so you still have a broader opportunity to uh, to get seeds. Seed banks can hold seeds for a very long time. Uh, now that being said, we have been now a, a, a bank for the Virginia Virginia white gourd seed corn. We were able to buy that from um, from a, an heirloom seed distributor. And then for the past couple of years, they haven't offered that and folks have been looking for it. And we were able to send seed to other sites. Uh, and we just, we just sent it free to them to, to just to keep it going because we had a surplus that year. Uh, although we do use it for, we'll grind it and use it for historic cooking, we don't need 200 pounds uh, necessarily to do that. And so we were able to share that. And uh, there are sites in Texas and outside of Texas that I'm able to grow that successfully from that. Um, so we save it not only just for us, but also because we want to be able to, to have that for the future uh, and distribute it to as many as possible to keep that going on.
Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. The rural American countryside is still filled with historic old barns built a century or more ago, but they won't be standing forever. To commemorate and capture the images and stories of the old barns, Ohio native Bob Kruger began painting and writing their histories, and that's all come together in a new book called Historic Barns of Ohio. You can get your copy by calling 877-647-2452 or visiting ruralheritage.com. It costs just $23.99 plus $7 shipping. Call 877-647-2452. Today you get a chance to look at equine hooked up versus oxen. There are a lot of pros and cons historically why you would choose oxen over horses or vice versa. Uh, I'll start with the biggest downside to oxen is that they're slower. Uh, and they're not as responsive to direction uh, from the line. They don't have lines. So you really rely on a team that's trained well. And I've seen some very well trained teams that don't even require a halter on. And you can just speak to them and direct them with a goat stick. This team, we're kind of, we, they haven't always worked together with each other, so we kind of have to make a few concessions of having halters on, but even then there's no fit in their mouth.
This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.